What's remarkable about Bernie Sanders is that when he says he supports a particular policy, I trust that he actually does genuinely support it because he has been advocating for the same policies for decades. But it's not enough, in my view, to just support a policy that I agree with you on because that does matter and I can give you credit for that. But what I also need is assurance that you're going to fight for the policies you say you advocate for. And what's really important is to recognize that the system we have now is entirely rotten. It is corrupt to the core. So I need someone to put forward a strategy that is specific, that will get these policies codified into law. Because think about this, with how corrupt our system is, just the normal legislative process, it's not going to suffice. Proposing a piece of legislation and then crossing your fingers and hoping that it passes the House and the Senate that's not good enough because you're not just taking on your opponents in Congress. You're not just trying to convince good faith allies that they should support the policy that you're proposing. You are taking on an entire multi-billion dollar industry, for example, when it comes to Medicare for all. So you're going to have to fight a massive disinformation campaign by the mainstream media. You're going to have to convince people in Congress to back your policy. And you're going to have to do everything in your power to twist arms and make people in power fear for their careers if they don't acquiesce. Now, in an interview with Kyle Kalinske, Bernie Sanders did say he'd be willing to primary corporate Democrats that don't get on board with policies like Medicare for All. Now, that is incredibly, incredibly important. Because if you're not willing to go to war with your own party, then you're not serious about student loan debt cancellation. You're not serious about the Green New Deal. And you're especially not serious about Medicare for All. Because even though a majority of Democrats in the House of Representatives support Medicare for All, in the Senate, it's still a very, very small amount of people who support it. So you have to crack skulls, you have to twist arms. In an interview with Ryan Grimm at his Bernie's Back rally with AOC, Bernie Sanders once again assured us that he has a very specific strategy to get these policies enacted. He is going to act as organizer-in-chief to mobilize people to put pressure on Congress to get these policies passed. So if you become president, uh, Richie Neal will become the chairman of the Ways and Means Committee. He's fairly public about his opposition to Medicare for All. Meanwhile, he has an opponent in the primary who's supportive of Medicare for All. Should, should, should there I'm be a push gonna, and then... I'm not going to look at race by race. This is what I will tell you, though. I think the last poll that I saw as over 70% of the American people understanding that healthcare is a human right, that we need to go forward with Medicare for all. And as President of the United States, trust me, I will remind every member of the United States Congress and their constituents about the need to take on the healthcare industry and guarantee healthcare to every man, woman, and child. After the 2008 campaign, Obama shut down OFA, wouldn't allow it to pressure members of Congress. Would you do it differently? Yes, I absolutely would. Look, I'm a great fan of Barack Obama. He's a friend of mine. He and I have actually discussed this very issue. And his view is it's hard to do it. I understand it. But the essence of my politics, and I think Alexandria's as well, is that we need an ongoing grassroots movement of millions of people to pressure Congress, to pressure the corporate establishment so that we can bring about the changes that this country desperately needs. So that's why I have said that I will not only be commander in chief, I'm going to be organizer in chief. That's exactly what that means. So the first thing I want to point out is that Richard Neal, who will be on the Ways and Means Committee, who is a vocal opponent to Medicare for All, he does have a primary challenger, as Ryan Grimm pointed out. His name is Alex Morris, and we absolutely need to make sure that we get all of these corporate Democrats out of office. Alex Morris, he seems more like a Warren Democrat, but he still has pledged to not take corporate PAC money, and he's exponentially better politically than Richard Neal. So we just have to defeat these incumbent Democrats who will act as obstacles to progress. But what Bernie Sanders says here is really important. What he is alluding to is a strategy that aims to put pressure on people in power. So if Richard Neal is going to try to hold up Medicare for All and keep it in committee perpetually, we're going to occupy his office. We're not going to leave until he has a change of heart. Because guess what? These policies, 
save lives. The Green New Deal would potentially save the planet. So we don't have time for all of these corporate Democrats to try to come up with some type of centrist solution to accommodate Republicans or their donors. We've got to get them passed, and we've got to get them passed fast. Bernie Sanders gets that. And where Obama failed, and this is kind of what Bernie Sanders implies here, he allowed the movement that he built up during the 2008 election to just dematerialize and demobilize once he came to power. You know, that entire agenda wasn't able to succeed because the left went to sleep. So what Bernie Sanders is saying here is, I'm not just going to be the president. I'm not just going to be head of state, commander in chief. I'm going to be the organizer in chief. So what does that mean? What does that look like in practice? Well, let's say, hypothetically speaking, President Bernie Sanders proposes Medicare for All, and um, it passes the House of Representatives, but the Senate is still controlled by Republicans. We, um, we have a slim majority of Republicans in control, and we still can't really get very many corporate Democrats on board. Well, in every single major city in this country, Bernie Sanders calls on people to take to the streets, to occupy the offices in D.C. of their representatives who are not willing to vote for Medicare for All. And then we start GoFundMes to bankroll their opponents if they don't back Medicare for All. See, we need to make sure that politicians re-realize who's the boss, right? Like, politicians don't really understand that we're their bosses. Our tax dollars pay for their checks. Without us, they don't exist, Without us seeing them as legitimate, they don't have power. So they need to actually fear, fear for us, fear for their career, and realize that it's us who they're serving, not their donors. And Bernie Sanders acknowledges that political pressure does, in fact, work. Making phone calls does, in fact, have an impact. So if you have this inside-outside strategy where Bernie Sanders, from within, and Kyle Kalinske talks about this to his credit, is putting pressure on people in power, and you have the grassroots putting pressure on people in power from the outside, you have a shot. Like, it's not a guaranteed victory, but you have a shot of actually getting fundamental change, right? Because nobody wants to make sure that they have, like, a hundred people in their office every morning hounding them about Medicare for All. They're likely just going to pass it. They're likely going to give in to pressure from the grassroots if it's so substantial. We just have to make sure that we're loud enough. So Bernie Sanders here, in talking about how he's going to be organizer in chief, he's reassuring me that, you know, I don't have to just trust that he's going to support these policies uh, when he gets in office. He's not going to change his mind, but he actually has a plan to get them codified into law. And this is going to be something that he alone can't accomplish. He's made this clear, not me, us. We all have to have this back. We all have to be ready to go to bat for President Bernie Sanders and mobilize because that's the only way we're going to get policies like Medicare for All passed. That's just a fact of reality. It's not going to pass under normal legislative procedures. We're past that. A bill becomes law when, you know, special interests and elites push for it normally. So we've got to subvert that entire corrupt process and go directly to the source of of power, occupy their offices, protest, flood their, you know, voicemails with uh, messages. That's what we've got to do if we want a fighting chance.